This one is what we call our estate vineyard. Uh, it's our oldest vineyard, so it's the one we've had since 2006. Um, we're in the Merlot block right here, but we have all of the Bordeaux reds planted on this property. So also Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Malbec and Petit Frito. Um, you can see, for example, with some of the vines that uh, died in the freeze, these are new vines that were planted this spring. Okay. okay. So they will be producing in three years. In three and years. then of course the, the larger vines, yeah. uh, which thankfully is the majority of the it. vines. Looks yeah. like most um, made it, eh? Yeah. yeah, like you said. Yeah, you won't nice. see much fruit on them. Um, normally they're actually trimmed back more, but as I mentioned, what we're doing is regrowing the Just trunk so we have healthy, yeah. uh, healthy new trunks. Yeah. Um, I mentioned that our reds are pressed in a traditional uh, basket press, so that's that machine right there. Ah. So okay. that basket itself, the stainless steel thing, we, we take out and we fill uh, with the red grapes after fermentation. Uh, and so it's an actual press, not a bladder that pushes this? It's that's a bladder press. Okay. So we have a bladder press that we use typically for the okay. whites. And for the reds, this one, the plunger press. comes down uh, and, cool. and presses. Yeah. Yeah, a little different than the wood ones we all had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same, exact same, uh, same principle, concept, right? Yes. And what's what was what's what happened here? What is this? Um, that's a uh, block that we're replanting. Oh, okay. uh, so that's going to be replanted in the spring of 25, coming spring. Okay. Uh, and so you're getting pretty close to 30 by the time those are ready to go. Uh, yes, nature of the business that yeah. everything takes a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is a uh, Cabernet Franc that we're walking through here. Yeah. And so you can see a little, like the difference between the, yeah. the new pine. Well, and it looks like this one had a little rougher, yes. a little rougher uh, time. Yeah, depending on the location and the variety, the variety. Right. There are a whole bunch of different factors, uh, but um, yeah, some blocks have come through almost unscathed, and some have uh, have been a lot harder hit. So, and someone said, so I guess when they, when they died, like you could still plant. You, you would did you take stuff like off the old vines and you put it in, or like do you, or did you just like we were saying you order? Or we ordered new vines. There is a way to do that to where you take cuttings of vines yeah. and can propagate them uh, yourself. Um, there Does it matter which way? Both are possible. Um, uh, there are uh, uh, there are always concerns around having what's called plain plant material, so uh, no viruses. Certain grape vines are subject to certain viruses. Okay. And so when you buy uh, from a nursery, you're looking for basically a guarantee that they're going to be Okay. And if you take cuttings, that could be more of a risk. The other aspect is that most, but not all, grapevines are uh, grafted. And what that means is the variety that's forming the roots is different than the variety on top. And if you order from a nursery, normally that's because uh, you're ordering grafted vines. Okay. Whereas if you take cuttings, well, unless you graft them yourself, yeah, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be. So this wind that you're experiencing. It adds to it too, though. Very typical of this valley. We're famous for the high winds, and that's part of the reason the valley is known as the organic farming capital of Canada, because the high wind keeps disease pressure and pest pressure lower. There is less of a need for oh, any kind okay. of sprays. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I would say <coughs> you can't grow organically here. You can't grow anywhere because this is one of the easiest places to grow organically. Got it. Well, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and obviously people took that to heart because most people are growing organically. If you're oh, exactly. Here, so. Yes. Yeah. No, that's cool. And so the quality of the fruits and vegetables you get from this valley is fantastic. And it's not just the wines where, you know, people who come and visit us make a big point of drop are stopping at the local fruit stalls yeah. to buy the whatever it may be, peaches or berries. Well, my uncle or apples. lives up in Oyama oh, and yeah. he does garlic. Okay. He's got huge fields of garlic. You know, Russian red and just I love garlic. Oh my Can't god, so do I. 
my Uncle P's garlics are really good. Like they really are really good. It's nice though, eh? It's beautiful in here. I feel lucky to be working here because you yeah. never ever get tired of these views, no matter no. how many years you were here. Even when you drive through, like it's such a, I don't know. Once you get past like Headley, it's kind of all really nice driving, you know, pretty much all the way to trail. Then, I, it, Cause then it changes so much, but I really, I, I've always liked going through this area. Yeah.